Hmm. Okay, students. Now we will move on to the formation of images by a convex lens. Okay. Now, in order to trace the ray diagrams for the image formation in a convex lens, again we have six cases. Before that, in order to draw the ray diagrams, just like how we learnt in a mirror, that is. Uh, concave mirrors. In order to trace the six ray diagrams, we followed the rules. There was four rules. Now, here, in order to trace the ray diagrams for the different position of images in convex lens, we need to follow three rules. Okay. Now you can see here. What are those three rules to be followed? Now you can see here. This is a convex lens, and as you know that the convex lens is having two spherical surfaces, due to which you have two principal focus, two focal lengths. Okay. So uh, both left and right side. Now we are concentrating only on the that is uh, both. Okay, towards the left side you have f1, 2f1. Towards the right side f2, 2f2, and so on. Okay. Now in the first rule you can see here when the ray of light is coming or when the incident ray is coming. Incident ray is coming from where? From the object. Okay. So object is situated at some distance or at some point from where the incident ray is coming. Now this incident ray is parallel to the principal axis. When the incident ray is parallel to the principal axis and it is coming at the boundary of separation between the two mediums, that is the air and the glass, two mediums, right? Obviously refraction should happen. Now the refracted ray, the bent ray, the refracted ray is coming on the Principal focus. That is second principal focus. You have two. I repeat. When the incident ray is parallel to the principal axis, the refracted ray is getting, or it is passing at the second principal focus. You can see here. When the incident ray is parallel to the principal axis, it is incident on the interface or the boundary between the two medium of separation. The refracted ray passes through the second principal focus F2 on other side of the lens. Other side means towards that side. So this is the first rule. Okay. Now coming to the second rule. Now you can see the second rule. You only can guess. Now the incident ray, incident light is coming obliquely. Okay. It is not parallel. It is coming obliquely. Not only that, it is passing through the optic center O. Now, whenever the incident ray is coming obliquely and passing through the optical center, there is no refraction. That's why it goes undeviated. Okay, the refracted ray you can see here. The refracted ray from the interface, it is going undeviated. Why? Because the incident ray is straight away hitting the optical center, right? The, when the incident ray is passing through the optic optic center, wo. The refracted ray goes undeviated after, okay, or it goes undeviated after refraction. So this is the second rule. Now coming to the third rule. Now you can see in the third rule there is a convex lens and there is principal axis. Now you, to the left side you have first focal length, okay, f1. Now the incident ray is again incident obliquely and it is passing through the first focal length. And it is incident on the interface between the two medium, that is air and glass. That is glass means lens. Okay. Now you can see the refracted ray. The refracted ray is going in parallel to the principal axis. So this is exactly the opposite of the first rule. Now you can see here. Okay, it is going like this, which means. Now the incident ray is falling on the first principal focus at the interface. The refracted ray is parallel to the principal axis. Here, incident ray was parallel to the principal axis. Refracted ray was going to the second principal focus. Here, incident ray is going through the second first principal focus, and at the interface, due to the refraction, the refracted ray is moving in parallel to the. Principal axis, which means both are contradict. This process is also called as, or it it also follows the principle of reversibility of light. This follows from the principle of reversibility of 
light. Okay. Now these three rules are very important in order to sketch or in order to draw the ray diagrams of the images formed in the convex lens at different positions. So just like concave mirror, how we had six cases here also we have six different cases for the images formed in a convex lens. Okay. Thank you. Okay, now we shall study different cases of the position of object and position of the image in a convex lens. Okay, now we have learned three rules, right? Before this uh, video, we have learned three rules in order to have the object and image. So, out of those three rules, we are taking only two rules, not exactly three rules. Why? Because in order to trace the ray diagram from the object, you require two rays, two incident rays to be formed. So that's why three, uh, sorry, two out of three rules. Okay, any two you have to take. Now you can see here first that is case one. When the object is at infinity, now you can see here the object is at infinity. It is at infinite distance. Now the rays are coming parallel to the principal axis towards the convex lens. Okay, when the object is at infinity, the incident rays are coming to the, sorry, uh, parallel to the principal axis. Okay, now when they are striking at the interface of the uh, air, two mediums, that is air and glass, okay, at this interface, it should undergo refraction. But here what happens? When the incident rays are coming from the object which is situated at infinity, the refracted rays on other side of the lens, means towards right side, they are all getting concentrated or getting converged at the second principal focus. You know, F1 is the first principal focus, followed by with the same distance from the optic center you have, sorry, with the double the distance from the optic center you have 2 FM, twice. If it is 2 cm, 4 cm. Here also 2 cm. If you have 2 f means 4 cm like that. But here, when the object is at infinity, all the incident rays which are coming in parallel to the principal axis, upon refraction at the interface, the refracted rays is getting converged at the second principal focus on the other side of the convex lens. Now, here you can see here, at that second principal focus only, the image is formed. I have put a dot for the image, which means image is at second principal focus. F2, image is real and inverted. Okay, it's real and inverted. Why? Because it is caught on the screen and it is inverted image, but it is highly diminished. Means very, very small as compared to the size of the object which is at infinity. So, image is highly diminished, real and inverted, image is formed at the second principal focus on other side of the convex lens. So, this is case 1. Now, we will move on to case 2. What is the case 2? When the object is beyond 2F1, means twice the first principal focus. Now, you know that F1 series will come towards the left, F2 series will come towards the right. Okay. Now here is the convex lens. Now you have F1. Here you have two F1. Okay. Now after two F1, beyond means after two F1, the object is there. You can see here the object is AB, which is situated beyond two F1. Beyond two F1. Now, as I told you, out of three rules, you have to apply two rules. Now here we can see from the top of the object that is A. Now we can assume this as a person, okay? Now we can assume this as a person, any person. Now this is head and now this is leg, okay? These are the legs and this is head. From the head, that is A, two rays will pass. One incident ray is going in parallel to the principal axis. Whenever the incident ray is going in parallel to the principal axis, the refracted ray will converge or it will pass through the second principal focus towards the right side. Now this ray is over, first ray. Now see the second ray. Three, two out of three rules, okay? Now the second ray is straight away going through the optic center. Now what happens when the ray is, when the incident ray is going through the optic center? It undergoes no refraction, which means it, the ray will go undeviated. That's why a straight line is following. There is no refraction here, okay? It is following the same. Now, just see where these two rays, that is 
the refracted ray the first refracted ray and the second refracted ray will meet where it is meeting it is meeting at this point at this point you are getting the inverted what image of the object right now you can see the size of the image the size of the image is less than the size of the object the image is real and inverted but where exactly the image is formed image is formed in between f2 and 2f2 in between that an image is formed okay image is formed in between f2 and 2f2 okay i repeat when the object is beyond when the object is beyond f1 the image is formed in between f2 and 2f2 the image is real and inverted the image is smaller in size it is smaller in size compared to the object so this is the case two. thank you okay now students let us move to case 3 okay now what is case 3 when the object is at 2f1 2f1 means it is coming towards left right now you can see here this is the f1 is the first focal length and this is the sorry first principal focus and this is second principal focus that is 2f1 second principal focus towards left side okay now here you can see the object ab which is at exactly 2f1 again we have to apply two rules out of three rules now one incident ray from the point a is incident parallel to the principal axis and at the interface refraction happens and the refracted ray is passing through the second principal focus on the right side you can see here now one more ray you can see here from the same point a it is passing through the optical center o as you know that when the ray is going on passing through the optical center the refracted ray means there is no refraction it will go straight away that is undeviated and these two refracted rays will meet at a point that point is exactly the position of the image but that image is formed at 2f2 you can see here when the object is placed at 2f1 the image is formed exactly at 2f2 and you can also see the size of the image the size of the image is equal to the size of the object also the image is real but inverted okay now when the object is at 2f1 image is formed at 2f2 on other side of the convex lens now the image is real and inverted the image is of the same size as of the object so that is case 3 now coming to the case 4 now case 4 is exactly opposite of case 2 okay now you can see here when the object is between f1 and 2f1 again you have a convex lens now you have the f1 and 2f1 in between f1 and 2f1 you have the object ab now let us trace the image okay now as usual you have to apply two rules out of three rules now from the point a one incident ray is following towards the lens or it is moving towards the lens and that incident ray is parallel to the principal axis that's why at the interface there is refraction and the refracted ray is passing through the second principal focus on other side of the lens now one more ray that has to go through the optic center that ray goes undeviated okay there is no refraction straight away it goes undeviated in the other uh, to the other side now you can see both the refracted rays is meeting at one point okay at that point image is formed now if you draw the image and locate the position this image is coming at the location beyond 2f2 you can see here this is f2 2f2 image is formed beyond okay beyond 2f2 which means when the object is in between f1 and 2f1 image is formed beyond 2f2 now see the size of the image size of the image is large than the size of the object means magnified the size of the image is larger than the size of the object image is real and inverted because ab is the image a dash a dash b dash is the sorry ab is the object a dash b dash is the image now you can see here what are the characteristics of image image is formed beyond 2f2 you can see here beyond 2f2 then image is real and inverted then image is larger in size than the object so that is 
case 4 opposite to that of case 2 thank you now let us move on to case 5 okay when the object is at f1 first principal focus okay now when the object is at f1 what happens now case 5 is just the opposite of case 1 right now see here at the first principal focus you have the object ab now again you have to take the two incident rays okay you have to take the two incident rays here now one incident ray is going parallel to the principal axis and at the interface it is getting refracted and passing through the second principal focus on the other side two f2 indicates second principal focus on the other side of the lens now one more ray is going through the optic center you can see here it is going through the optic center therefore it goes undeviated now these two rays are parallel rays okay so when these parallel rays will meet we don't know it might extend to the infinity so at the infinity you are getting the image that's why we have mentioned the dotted line so at the infinity the image is formed so when the object is at f1 the image is formed at infinity on other side of the mirror okay sorry other side of the lens now therefore the image is formed at infinity the image is real and inverted and the image is highly magnified very bigger image you will get okay so the image is highly magnified than the object so that is case 5 now coming to case 6 when the object is between O, O means optical center and first principal focus. Now very important, the case is just make a comparison to the all the cases of the concave mirror. You will come to know. Okay. In concave mirror, the case 6 was the speciality, right? You, because you, you have got virtual and erect image. So here also the same thing, but the side is different. Also, you have to go through the rules now. Now this is the convex lens. Now AB is the object you can see. It is between O that is optic center and the first principal focus that is F1. Object is in between O that is optical center and the first principal focus. AB is the object. Now one ray incident ray is going parallel to the principal axis. Therefore it is passing through the second principal focus okay so that is the first row now one more rule we are applying one more ray from the same object that is at the position A it is moving through the optical center so that ray goes undeviated now these two rays are not parallel they are divergent rays okay they are divergent they are moving divergent so how to obtain an image from a divergent ray you have to extend the ray backwards which means whenever you are extending the ray backward means it is obvious that you will get a virtual image now see here this is the first refracted ray at this interface this is the second refracted ray at the interface now you can see here we are extending both the rays backwards you can see here both the rays backwards and when they intersect at that point an image is formed so I have mentioned I have drawn the image in dotted lines why because image is behind the object that's why in order to see this image you have to look from here through the lens okay you, you cannot look from here parallelly you should uh, look obliquely okay why because the image is larger than the object so in order to have the larger object you have to see through the lens like this in this position that's why I have drawn the eye okay means an observer is observing at this position so you are getting the image behind the object okay the image is enlarged and the image is virtual and erect okay virtual and erect is the image image is enlarged than the object or image size is greater than the object size okay so this is when the object is between optical center and the first principal focus image is formed beyond f1 you can see image is formed beyond f1 image is formed beyond f1 on the same side means object is towards the left side image is also towards the left side so on the same side of the lens you are getting the image okay image is beyond f1 now image is virtual you can see because it is 
behind the mirror or it is behind the object image is virtual and erect okay it is not inverted it is erect and image is magnified or image is larger than the object okay thank you now uh, students let us have the characteristics of the image formed by convex lens okay now let us make uh, uh, see the characteristics okay in this uh, uh, column or in the table now you have serial number position of the object position of the image size of the image and nature of the image now see here when the object is at infinity the position of the image is at f2 towards the other side of the convex lens the image is highly reduced or it is highly diminished image is real and inverted that is case 1 now case 2 when the object is at beyond 2f1 towards the left side the image is formed between f2 and 2f2 on the other side image is diminished and the image is real and inverted now see the third case when the object is at 2f1 towards the left the position of the image is at 2f2 means at the same distance towards the right therefore the size of the image is equal to the size of the object so image is real and inverted fourth case when the object is at f1 and 2f1 image is at beyond 2f2 image is enlarged again it is real and inverted now fifth case when the object is at f1 now the image is formed at infinity image is highly magnified and it is real and inverted now the last that is sixth case when the object is between f1 and optical center that is uh, i have mentioned it as uh, c here it is not c it is o okay it is o now when the uh, object is between f1 and o now the image is beyond f1 on the same side which means the image is enlarged but the image is virtual and erect why because the image is on same side it is behind the lens so and it is also behind the object also that's why the image is virtual and erect okay thank you okay students now we will move on to the concave lens okay before going to the <coughs> that is you have only two cases to be studied in con concave lens where is the object and where is the image to uh, write the ray diagrams but we have to follow again the three rules here just like convex uh, mirror in which we have studied uh, three rules here also the three rules has to be followed in order to place the image in a image through a concave lens okay now these are the images of the or these are the diagrams of the concave lens now you can see here in the first rule this is a concave lens now the middle line that is principal axis o is the optical center now here i have drawn towards left i have drawn f2 and why because in the concave lens as per the conventions of what i have thought i have taken whatever the uh, focal lens towards uh, sorry the principal focus and the focal lens towards left uh, left side is numbered as 2 whereas towards right right side i have numbered as 1 that you have seen now in certain textbooks they have mentioned this as f1 also here this left side f1 will come and the two series that is the second principal focus 2 and then uh, uh, f2 2 f2 towards right side f1 2 f1 uh, towards the left side that is also correct okay even if you write here f2 and here f1 means no problem why because the distance until and unless if it doesn't vary here if you write f1 there if you write f2 or here if you write f2 there if you write f1 no problem if you uh, keep the focal lens towards right and towards left from the optical center as constant suppose if you have uh, here f1 as 2 cm here f2 will also be 2 cm only or else here if you write f1 taking 2 cm towards right side also it is 2 cm only so it makes no difference if you are writing towards the left f2 or towards the right f1 or towards the uh, left f1 or towards the right f2 okay now you can see here in the first rule the incident ray is parallel or the incident ray which is coming from the object it is going parallel to the principal axis 
Now, the, upon this, uh, when it hits the interface, the boundary between the two media, it undergoes refraction. Now you can see here the refracted ray. Now, this is, see here, this refracted ray appears to be, okay, it appears to be coming from the principal focus, that is F2, I repeat. When the incident ray is traveling parallel to the principal axis and it is uh, uh, hitting the, at the boundary of uh, two mediums, the refracted ray okay, appears to be, the refracted ray is going towards the other side of the lens. Okay, the refracted ray is moving towards other side of the lens, but this ray is appearing to be coming from what? Principal focus. So, Whatever the concept that here we are dealing in concave lens appears to be virtual, you should come to know why because here we are having the principal focus, okay, toward that is represented by a dotted line. So obviously you will think of the image, okay. Now, see this is the, the first row, that is the, whenever the incident ray travels parallel to the principal axis, the refracted ray appears to be coming from the principal focus. I will call this as second principal focus, no matter, okay. Now, moving to the second rule. Now you can see the second rule just like that of the second rule of convex lens. That remains same for concave lens also. Now you can see here, the center line that is the principal axis and you have the optic center O. Now an incident ray is moving obliquely, okay. It is moving obliquely and it is passing through the optic center. So, the refracted ray also goes undeviated. Means, it is going undeviated. There is no bend in the, or there is no change in the path. Okay, it is moving in the same line. So, that's why, whenever the incident ray is passing through the optic center O, it goes the path undeviated after refraction. So, this rule happens to be the same as that of convex lens that is rule number two of convex lens now rule number three of concave lens you can see here it is just opposite to that of rule number one because it follows the principle of reversibility of light okay now you can see here now the ray of light is coming at some oblique okay at some oblique uh, incidence and it is coming and meeting at the interface of the boundary of separation between the two mediums and you can see here it is undergoing refraction now you can see here this incident ray this incident ray instead of going as a refracted ray parallel to the principal axis it appears to be it appears to be meeting at the principal focus see here it emerges parallel to the principal axis after refraction. Now incident ray, this incident ray appear to be meeting at F1. You can see here this incident ray is going here and suddenly dotted line started. Means this incident ray was appearing to be going towards F1. But actually it is going refracted and that refracted ray is in parallel to the principal axis which means the rule 3 is exactly opposite to that of rule 1. So, the incident, the incident ray which is supposed to be appearing towards the first principal focus on the right side of the concave lens actually undergoes the refraction at the interface and that refracted ray is going in parallel to the principal axis. So, that is rule number 3. Based on these three rules, we will take any two rules out of three rules and trace the image formed in a concave lens. That is, we have only two cases. So, that will be discussed in the next video. Okay? Thank you. Uh, now, students, we will study the two cases of the formation of the image in the concave lens. Okay? Based on the three rules, as I told you, we are taking out of three rules only two rules into consideration while constructing the ray diagrams for the image formation in concave lens. Now first case, when the object is at infinity, now you can see here, this is the concave lens, 
Now the dotted lines passing through the vertical symmetry is the aperture. You can say the optical center that is O, and the line which is passing horizontally over the optical center is the principal axis. Now you can see here the two rays from the object which is at infinity. We don't know where it is. It is coming. Okay. When these two rays are incident on the interface or on the aperture of the concave lens, means rule one you have to apply. What happens? The, ref the two refracted rays are appearing to be coming from the principal focus. Here I have mentioned F2. In textbooks here they have given F1 and to that side they have given F2 and 2F2 like that. It makes no difference. Okay, now only I am telling it makes no difference if you write F2 to the left or F1 to the right or F1 to the left or F2 to the right until unless you take properly the focal lens. If the focal lens are proper then it is okay, it makes no mistake. So here I have taken F2, so no problem. Okay. For convex lens I have taken to this side F1 and to that side F2. For concave lens for my convenience, I have taken to the left side F2 and to the right side F1. Okay. Now, as I told you, when the light rays are moving parallel or when the incident rays are moving parallel to the principal axis, the refracted rays, you can see here, these two divergent rays are the refracted rays on the other side, they are appearing to be coming from principal focus, which means we have applied rule 1. Now, what is that? New extend here and you get the image. Now you can see image is just a dot, small dot. Means what? Image is highly diminished. It's very, 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 very small. Okay. When the image is at, formed at F2, you can see here where the image is formed at F2, at the second principal focus or exactly at the principal focus towards the left side. You are getting the image. Image is highly diminished. Okay. And image is virtual and erect image is because image is not formed towards that side right image is formed towards where there is object so image is virtual and erect okay now moving to case 2 when the object is between optic center and infinity which means optic center is wo infinity means any distance in between that when the object is placed now see here I have taken this AB. Now this is object at in between infinity, in between infinity and optic center. Okay. Now again I will apply two rules. First two rules. Okay. Now from the position A, an incident ray is moving parallel to the principal axis. Therefore, the refracted ray, that is divergent ray, is appear to appearing to be coming from second principal focus F2, just like this. Okay. Now again apply the rule number 2 one more ray which is incident on exactly or which is passing through the optical center it will go undeviated after the refraction which means no refraction here it will straight away go on the same line now when these two rays meet at one point right these two rays meet at one point and that point is the position of the or the location of the image. You can see here AB is the object, A dash B dash is the image. Now see here this is the image. Now this is the object. Okay. Now where is this image formed? This image is formed in between F2, that is second principal focus and optical center O. In between you are getting the image. Image is formed in between principal focus or the second principal focus and the optical center you are getting the image now what is the size of the image image is very very less or in size okay very very smaller in size compared to the size of the object so when the object is between optic center and infinity image is formed between second principal focus and the optic center image is smaller than the object Image is virtual and erect. You can see here image is virtual and it is erect. So these are the two cases of the image formation in concave mirror. Now students, moving on to the next con concept in the lenses. That is for both concave and convex lens. We have to follow certain sign conventions. Okay, Just how we studied for mirrors and uh, we have applied in the various problems. 
here also we have the problems on lenses so that's why this new cartesian sign conventions which is very helpful for the lenses okay now you can see here here for my convenience i have taken convex lens okay now this is a convex lens even this applies good or this uh, uh, sign conventions holds good for concave lens also now you can say here this is towards the left side of the convex lens that is towards the right side of the convex lens now you can see this is object ab when the object is above the principal axis or i can even call this as upward upward height upward height means when the object is above the principal axis you have to take that as that is object distance as positive sign object distance as positive sign coming to the right side you can see usually the image will be formed on the right side right except the two uh, there is the two cases of concave mirror and on last case of convex mirror the other cases the image is always formed on the right side now you can see here the image or uh, that is on the right and the image is downward that is real and inverted right now when the image is below when the image is below the principal axis that is when you are taking downward height that is the size of the image downward below the principal axis it should be taken as negative okay now that is about the heights or size of the object and size of the image that is the convention next when you are tracing the distance when you are now this is the incident ray incident ray is moving from left to right when you are moving in the same direction or when you are taking the distance from the same direction along the incident ray it should be taken as positive which means from the optic center if you are considering the distance towards the right side or when you are taking the distance in the direction of the incident light usually you are uh, considering from the right side of the optical center right so that should be taken as positive now you can come here when you are measuring the distance against the incident light now incident light is going like this when you are measuring the distance any distance it may be it may be focal length distance or it may be object distance okay whichever distance when it is against the incident light it should be taken it as negative understood so this is the new cartesian sign conventions for the lenses okay and also whatever the distances you are measuring it should be from the optical center of the lens you are measuring from the optical center okay so that is the new cartesian sign conventions thank you okay students next concept is lens formula okay we have learned mirror formula right what is the mirror formula 1 by f is equal to 1 by u plus 1 by v now in the lens formula f u and v those uh, you know terms or notations remains the same but only the mathematical sign i have to keep in mind now you can see here if u is the object distance remember you are all measuring the distance taking into consideration the new cartesian sign conventions and the distances has to be measured from the optical center of the lens in mirror it was pole but in lens it is optical center so keeping that in mind let u be the object distance v be the image distance and f be the focal length of the lens then 1 by f is equal to 1 by v minus 1 by u how to write how to spell it reciprocal of the focal length is equal to the difference between reciprocals of the image distance and the object distance i repeat reciprocal of the focal length is equal to the difference between the reciprocals of image distance and the object distance respectively so this is the definition of the lens formula now for the problem sake how we have taken the modified mirror formula that is f is equal to uv by u plus v similarly we make some alterations for this formula so that to go to do the problems that modified form lens formula will be easy now you can see here 1 by f is equal to take the lcm on the rhs now the denominator product of image distance and the object distance that is v into u is the lcm write in the denominator u into v okay in the numerator here you should multiply u here you should multiply v so you get u minus v divided by uv 
Now take reciprocal on the both sides. Why? Because we don't want reciprocals. We want the straight away the focal length towards the left hand side. We don't want its reciprocal. So what we have to do? Take the reciprocals. Now 1 by f, f will go to numerator, f is equal to, now this will go to numerator, numerator will come to denominator. So uv by u minus v. So in mirror formula it was f is equal to uv by u plus v. Here it is uv by u minus v. How we can write this as? Here we can write this as product by difference. Product by difference. In mirror formula it was product by sum. Here it is product by difference. So f is equal to uv by u minus v. Okay, have to remember. Now moving to linear magnification of lenses. Now just like in mirror, this linear magnification gives the relationship between size of the image or height of the image, height of the object or size of the object and also object distance and image distance. But magnification means it is always related to first priority is size of the image and the size of the object. So magnification is defined as the ratio of size of the image to the size of the object. So I have written M is equal to size of the image as capital I, size of the object as O. But that size of the image is nothing but what? Height of the image that is H2. Then size of the object means what? Height of the object that is H1. So M is equal to H2 by H1. You know that just like mirror formula. So now we have lens formula but there is no negative sign here. So we have M is equal to H2 by H1 which is equal to V by U. I repeat M is equal to H2 by H1 is equal to V by U. Now this is the formula for linear magnification of lenses. That linear magnification is taken in the ratio in terms of heights of image and object distance. Sorry, heights of image and object as well as distances that is uh, measured from the optic center that is object and image distance so that ratio next on all factors this m and this linear magnification of lenses means we are speaking for both concave and convex lens now this magnification factor that is m for the convex lens is always less than 1 you can ask me why sir it is less than 1 why because you can see in the convex lens sorry in the concave lens ray diagrams in two cases always height of the image is greater than the height of the object which means height of the image is sorry height of the object is greater than height of the image now see here height of the object means h1 now when the denominator itself is greater than h2 which means obviously the value of n will be less than 1 okay it will be less so that's why in concave lens m is always less than 1 why because size of the object is greater than size of the image. Now in convex lens, since we have six cases and we have uh, different size of the object and different size of the image, we have to three, uh, we have to see three different cases. One is when this magnification factor becomes one, when see here, when this becomes one here, when h2 is equal to h1, right? or h1 is equal to h2 which means size of the image is equal to size of the object then m is equal to 1 that is first case okay now when m becomes less than 1 when m becomes less than 1 when h1 is greater than h2 right so or sorry when it is less than 1 and h1 is less than h2 which means size of the object is less than size of the image when h1 is less than h2 or vice versa, h2 is uh, uh, greater than, okay, then m becomes less than 1. Sorry, I'm sorry, when h1 is greater than h2, okay, when h1 is greater than h2, then because when this is greater, this becomes less. When h1 is greater than h2, then m value decreases. Now, when M value increases, when H1 is less than H2, when H1 is less than H2, that is, height of the object is less than height of the image, then the magnification factor increases. 
when the height of the object is greater than the height of the image then the magnification factor decreases why because both are we can see here that is h1 and m they are inversely related whereas h2 and m they are directly related okay one is in direct proportion one is in inverse proportion so this is the linear magnification of lenses thank you okay now students let us move to the power of the lens okay very very important and uh, this uh, power of the lens is expressed in terms of focal length of the lens whichever lens it may be it may be convex lens or it may be concave lens okay now power of the lens is defined as the reciprocal of the focal length of the lens that's it power of the lens is defined as p is equal to 1 by f 1 by f means reciprocal means both are reciprocals to each other p is equal to 1 by f or f is equal to 1 by p but we are defining for the power of the lens as reciprocal of the focal length which means both are inversely related you can see here when the focal length is less when the focal length is less the power is more then if the focal length is more if the denominator is more then the numerator power of the lens is less that is the relationship between power of the lens and the focal length of the lens p is equal to 1 by f now why we are going for this power of the lens or what does it indicate what is the importance now we have two lenses one is convex lens and another one is concave lens now see here it is the ability of the lens power of the lens means ability of the lens to converge or diverge the rays falling on it okay means you have two types of lenses on one of the lenses if the incident light is the uh, falling on it means how should be the refracted rays whether it is properly converging okay or whether it is properly diverging if it is converging means it is convex lens if it is diverging means it is concave lens so that ability of the lens to converge or diverge that is depends on convex or concave will give the power of the lens okay it indicates the ability of converging and the diverging properties of the lens now you know that for convex lens focal length is positive why because in convex lens the image is formed towards the right side means in the direction of the incident ray if you are moving means naturally all the distances will be taken as positive only why okay? because it is coming towards the right side and you are moving along the incident ray so if the focal length is positive means this power is also positive so for convex lens power the value of the power is positive now for concave lens in for concave lens there are two cases in both the cases the image is formed at the virtual end that is towards the left side only or towards the, uh, uh, the to the place where the object is located which means you are measuring the distance against the incident light which means negative so if the focal length is negative means for the concave mirror power will also be negative if the rhs is negative means lhs is also negative so this is this is how the power of the lens varies that is power of the lens is positive for convex lens power of the lens is negative for concave lens now what is the si unit of power si unit of power of the lens is diopter d i o p t r e it is measured in diopter okay now the diopter is represented by capital d okay now when i say power is equal to 1 diopter when the power is equal to 1 diopter when will the lhs become 1 when the rhs is also 1 means lhs value will be equal to 1 which means if the focal length is 1 meter okay if the focal length is 1 meter that is standard unit focal length in 1 meter means standard if the focal length is in 1 meter then the power of the lens will be 1 diopter so uh, power of the lens is said to be 1 diopter if the focal length of the lens is 1 meter okay so power is equal to 1d or 1 diopter if the focal length is 1 meter so p is equal to 1 by f is equal to 1 by 1 p is equal to 1d 1d means 1 diopter next to find the power of the lens if the focal length f is in centimeter now this formula holds good if the focal length is in meter now if the focal length is in centimeter what i have to do obviously the denominator p is equal to 1 by f you divide f by 100 because 
वन मीटर इज इक्वल टू हंड्रेड सेंटीमीटर सो कन्वर्ट दट और वन सेंटीमीटर इज इक्वल टू जीरो पॉइंट जीरो वन मीटर सो नाउ वन बै एफ बै हंड्रेड यू टे अगेन वन इंटू हंड्रेड बै एफ विल कम मीन हंड्रेड विल गो टू न्यूमरेटर सो पी इज इक्वल टू हंड्रेड बै एफ डयोप्टर नाउ this power of the lens will be in centimeter okay now it is will be in centimeter which means for f or for 1 by f if you just multiply by 100 it will become in centimeter okay to convert that to meter divide by 100 okay now usually it will be in meter only suppose if it has to be converted to centimeter just multiply by 100 okay so this this is Uh, the concept that is related to the power of the lens thank you now after knowing the relationship between the power of the lens and its focal length that is p is equal to 1 by f then what exactly uh, when the power is said to be one diopter that is for the focal length is equal to 1 meter p is equal to 1d then uh, if the focal length is uh, given in centimeter how to convert that is p is equal to 100 by f you have to make after that suppose if you have a uh, series of lenses means what combination of concave lens and convex lens or in series convex lens or in series concave lens when all when the n number of lenses are in uh, what in group okay combination so how we have to take the power now see here when the number of lenses are placed in contact with one another which means there are many lenses now okay like you have convex lens you have concave lens convex lens concave lens like that n number of combination you have then the power of the combination the whole combination now you have to take not the individual power of the lens when you add it you will get whole power right so the power of the combination of the lenses is equal to the algebraic sum of powers of individual lenses which means individual power of each lens if you take if you add the number of lenses you will get the collective power that collective power is also called as power of the combination of lenses it is simply given by the formula p is equal to p1 plus p2 plus p3 so on to plus pn n indicates the integer number okay so you have n number of lenses okay For one example i have given see here in the diagram i have convex lens the next lens is the concave lens followed by a convex lens now you know that the convex lens the power is said to be positive why because the focal length is positive similarly for now the for concave lens the power is negative why focal length is negative similarly for convex lens the power is positive so for the first convex lens p1 second it is concave lens p2 that is the power then the third lens is convex lens again the power is p3 now you add all these things why because we have taken only three power for the example say we have taken the first lens power that is convex lens plus 5 diopter then for the second lens that is concave lens minus 2 diopter then for the third convex lens we have taken plus 5 diopter now as per this formula you write how many lenses are there only three so p is equal to p1 plus p2 plus p3 now plus 5 Plus of minus two plus five, so you'll get five minus two plus five. So if you simplify it, you'll get p is equal to plus eight d, which means combination power is eight diopter. Now the combination power when it becomes plus eight diopter, the sign indicates that the combination of the lenses will result in a convex lens. Why? Because you can see you're getting the sign to be plus. the plus indicates that the combinational effect of all these lenses will result in the convex lens so p is equal to plus 8 diopter so that is about power of combination of lenses thank you